So I think uh, they said that uh, if uh, you watch three chess games a day, you keep the doctor away. If this uh, saying is true, uh, here in US we don't need to pay for the health insurance. We just need to watch chess games. With that said, uh, let's return to this uh, great book by uh, Viktor Moskalinsko, uh, Tromposky Attack and London System. This is game three. The old Benoni with free B5. Uh, it was played between Emil Mirzoev, which is a 2493 rated player, against Emad Eldin Ibrahim, which is a 2000 rated player. I guess uh, 300 points difference uh, make a lot of difference, so one would uh, safely assume that uh, white won. Okay, let's start to see the beginning moves. d4, f6, bishop cg5, c5. Okay, this attack to the center, uh, it's kind of important. Um, and uh, I think uh, Moskalenko is doing a great job to give us the confidence we need to play this opening because through showing how these games uh, were interpreted by different players before we had a 2700 uh, Firuja that lost okay but he lost because he didn't find the right move and it's okay and before again there was a game by him uh, that is a grandmaster a 2600 rated player uh, so he gives us a way to learn the opening through the games and I really love this approach B5 quite a big uh, attack on the king side so what does Moskalenko says this is another typical advance in this structure but here the bishop on g5 is a game changing joker uh, well joker it's a kind of word that is interesting because uh, in French if I remember well they use a fou which is a kind of joker is the clown of the court right so it's kind of interesting, this choice of war. Bishop takes f6, avoiding a well-known line on the old Benoni, which appears after the move, white's move, knight f3. Okay, so he says that there is a line uh, with knight f3 for knight f3, this one, which has something like uh, nearly 3,000 games. So this must be known. And we, this is a great in, uh, to read a book, right? We need to read a book like Moskalenko because he has done the research for us. And what he's telling us is that uh, if you were black and you want to play this opening, you definitely need to pay attention to a move that has 3,000 games and learn about it, which means prepare a line to counter attack. Uh, this move. In any case, in this game was played bishop takes f6 and uh, um, nothing. Uh, um, it follows with g takes f6. e3. Uh, obviously, now after this move, uh, white is attacking this pawn. Okay? But, uh, for example, could white play another move? For example, here in the book it says white could play this, e4, right? And it could have been followed by queen b6, or there is also a6, but white continues the attack with a4, so let's return back. e4, black continues with queen b6, protecting the pawn b5, and then uh, white continues with knight d2, bishop b7, a4 attacking again, a6 and c4, and white is better. And uh, this is uh, come from a game, Rouses Lockster in Lausanne 2000. I don't know if Rouses is that grandmaster that was caught using uh, a phone in the stalls. If that's the case, if if, obviously, if that is the case, then it could be important because it means that these openings 
move was played by the computer, so they are the best. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> but uh, if someone uses a phone, a phone will beat the crap out of us 100 times out of 100. <laughs> Because the phone is not a phone anymore. It's a computer, a portable computer that we have in our pockets. So it's really great also for knowing the truth about chess. So queen b6 uh, after e3. And here in the book, uh, Moskalenko says the black queen will be misplaced on b6. And that's quite interesting. Uh, because so what should have black played? Because uh, here it says. Uh, uh, if it had followed with the six, uh, white would just play the simple f4, reiterating the attack. Or, for example, and so this is probably the line that he says black should play, maybe, knight d2, f5, queen h5, bishop g7, and knight c4. Once more, we see that. Uh, White is better for Moskalenko, also if he doesn't say why, I believe uh, it's the fact that he has more active and developed pieces. But again, in a human game, one, and, and this is the thing, uh, once one has this kind of lines over a computer like chess base, it would be worth to explore them and to play at least one game for each side uh, against an engine understand how to continue, what are the themes, what are the typical moves and patterns. Let's return to the game from move 5, queen b6, that uh, he, Moskarenko said the queen, black queen will be misplaced in v square. How does white continue? That's a good question, right? And uh, so, the right continuation for white, he says, is knight e2, but he gives an exclamation point, and he says, the stronger maneuver, mm, such structures. The knight is directed to g3. So, this is what we need to remember. This knight wants to go here. And so, this is the maneuver, knight e2, g3. And we must remember this. Bishop g7, c3, probably to avoid that uh, black plays uh, f5. Okay, so when black plays this, uh, attacking this, and obviously you wanted to attack here, c3 is already here blocking. d6, knight g3, we see the maneuver has gone to fruition, so knight e2 and knight g3, this is the maneuver we must remember in this opening, before trying to make more soft this and this, with the attack from this side too, right? Notice that I'm not watching the book when I'm doing these comments, but uh, some things are logical, so what can you do? I mean, it's part of a game. And it's quite interesting, this move. Quite interesting. So black has changed the diagonal, and white goes to try to stop everything because he thinks he has the time, he has the time to do it. Okay, so what does uh, Moskrenko says? White's position is strategically winning, since castling to either side is very risky for black. Okay. Now, um, Moskrenko also says one thing. He says that instead of c4, uh, black, uh, white could have played knight d2 uh, because uh, this would have kept more opportunities on the queen side. Okay, probably because it could be open. So, c4, uh, strengthening the center. Okay, obviously, it's uh, supporting the pawn d5, so it's clear. Rook g8, g3. And here again we see the point, no? We have this bishop. Where is going? Where is going this bishop? Is it going here, attacking this? No, it can't. Why? Because there is this. 
So where do you develop this bishop? You cannot really develop because it's attack. So how do you continue? Uh, um, White decided for this move. Now, is this move better? Maybe. Uh, Moskalenko says that knight d2 and uh, queen c2 were more precise moves. Uh, but the move played by the white player doesn't change the evaluation either. So it means that uh, knight d2 and queen c2 were moves uh, approved by the computer. So, bishop g4, wow, wow, great move, great move, it's practically attacking this and this at the same time. So, how does white continue and save the night or save the day with bishop e2? Bishop takes e2, queen takes e2, knight d7. Well, both players uh, have done a good job in developing, obviously, White player has maybe a little better situation, but uh, not anymore the bishop pair. Yeah. Okay. So let's see how it continues. Knight d2, a5, a3, a4. Wow. Probably the idea is to play b3. Um, so, castle and the knight e5 but strangely here it says that uh, white dominates after uh, let's see b3 so b3 strangely is not a big problem for for white uh, yeah there is not a big problem because it's a little difficult for black to take advantage of this great uh, outpost probably uh, and why because it says that uh, white would continue with a four um, but uh, it says dominates it doesn't say how much and, and notice in reality also this knight doesn't have many many squares eh, where to go so i don't know but who knows so knight e5 let's see how the game continues so f4 knight d7 aye aye uh b queen queen d3 knight f8 protecting h7 that was attacked okay then it continues b3 wow good move opening up the position will be fatal for the black king rook g6 protecting probably again a little he takes b4, queen takes b4, bishop, sorry, not bishop, b takes a4, rook takes a4, rook a b1, queen f3, rook b8, rook d7, rook f b1, aye aye aye. Now, obviously, it's, uh, black is in big trouble. The game is probably over. I don't know. Rook e6, uh, sorry, not rook e6, knight e6, uh, obviously the problem uh, was he, that uh, if um, uh, black would play this, uh, this is checkmate, okay? So we must work also on our checkmates. Uh, black tried to give away the knight, but clearly the game is finished no matter what. Uh, what can you do after this? I don't know, right? Uh, because also if it goes, uh, I don't think there is a way to save it. Uh, so the game here ended, okay? And uh, black resigned. But let's see. How does white checkmate? Okay? Does he do it like this? With queen e4? Possibility? Yes. Yes. Because now, duck. Duck. And the game is over. So this was the end of the game. So what did we learn from this game? How did uh, things change? Because sometimes in some games, it's not so clear where things went uh, very, very bad. And it seems to me that I don't see 
any double uh, question point which mark uh, a big mistake, a big blunder from uh, Black, right? The game just went progressively bad from the beginning. Uh, so what happened here? Duck, duck. Because we, this is the point. We must always ask ourselves uh, what is the critical moment? What is the critical moment when the game went bad? If we are not able to do that, we are just wasting our time. Every time we see a game, we need to understand where things went wrong. Where things went wrong. Okay? Uh, and so I think we could pay attention to what uh, Moskalenko said here, around here, after this move. He said that White's position is strategically winning since castling to either side is very risky for Black. So it must have happened before, but Moskalenko doesn't write where. That's the point. So let's return back again. Here, d4, knight f6, bishop g5, c5. D5, B5, Bishop takes F6, G takes F6. So maybe this G take F6 is not the best. Because here it says he takes F6, E4, white is likely better. White is likely better, but here, for example, probably black would be able to castle. But, so let's watch a little ahead. E3. Queen b6. He wrote a thing saying queen b6, the queen will be misplaced here on b6. Okay, so what should black do before? Because on before he gave this line saying that uh, white is better. So the queen is not misplaced, but yet we fail to see what black should do. And why do I tell you this? Because uh, it seems that I'm wasting time and uh, making the video long for no reason. But uh, no, it's very, very important. Because we don't understand what happened. When it happens in the game, what do we do? Because uh, in the game, maybe there will be someone that uh, actually took time to analyze this game and understand what happened and how to neutralize white. Okay? So I think in this case it would be useful to use an engine. So I will do the deep analysis function of uh, just base. In this case, I have this fat freeze too. And I will see when things go definitely bad. How do we see it? Let's see. For example, here, Fat Fritz 2 is saying e takes f6. He doesn't play g takes f6. And uh, however, white has uh, an advantage, huh? a slight advantage at 0.4. Let's see what happens with g. g takes f6, uh, it goes to 0.9. Now, I'm not saying that a human is able to actually exploit such advantage, but as we can see, something went bad. And uh, it consider e4, not e3. E3 is not the strongest move, but here, for example, he doesn't consider the queen right away. He started to consider a6 and b4, and now he went to use the queen on b6. So the queen b6, yes, it's misplaced, but probably it was the move to play. Okay? Because uh, we are at depth 27, so it's kind of good depth. So queen b6. 92, the maneuver that we fought. And here there is f5, not bishop g7. f5, strange. f5. Black, as black, that Fritz would play f5. Notice uh, uh, white is still at 0 0.7 advantage. Eh? It's not that he's uh, without uh, anything. But let's see what, what happens. With f5, we continue with the maneuver taught us by Moskalenko, knight g3. And here, the computer continues with h5. 
it doesn't even defend. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't defend the pawn on uh, f5. Very interesting. And the white now has a 0 0.9 advantage. I don't know. I think uh, this game wasn't uh, well analyzed. It should tell us how black could actually uh, stop this thing. Maybe, maybe, I'm just saying, uh, maybe the way to go is uh, not with b5, uh, like uh, black did in the game. Maybe uh, the, game, the way to go is pin b6 or uh, knight e4, but probably b5 is not the, the way to go. It uh, makes the position too unstable for black. And I will stop here and obviously urge you to look uh, with another engine or uh, more deeply at this game and see what was going on.